Welcome back to this mini-series on ClamAV, a tool that should be in every defensive security arsenal. In this video, we're going to go over the hash signatures that ClamAV supports, as well as how to create your own hash signatures and integrate them into your ClamAV instance. Let's take a look at the different hashes that ClamAV supports and dive into the format of those signatures now. There are two types of hash signatures supported by ClamAV. Both types use the same information, and there isn't much to them. The first piece of information is the hash string of the thing you want to match. This string can be an MD5 hash, a SHA-1 hash, or a SHA-256 hash. The second piece of information is the size of the thing that you want to match. This information is the size in bytes, so a 1 kilobyte file would have a size of 1024. The final piece of information for a hash signature is the name. This should be identifiable enough that you know what kind of malware it's matching. ClamAV has a standard set of names that are used for the signatures they publish, and you're free to use the same convention for your own signatures, or you can pick your own. The first type of hash signature that ClamAV supports is the full file hash signature. These signatures are based on the entirety of the malicious file. The hash string is the hash of the full file, and the size is the full file size. Full file hashes are stored in a .hdb file for MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256 signatures, or a .hsb file for SHA-1 and SHA-256 signatures only. ClamAV is able to determine the hashing algorithm based on the length of the hash string, so you can store all of your hashes in a .hdb file unless you have a need for backward compatibility. Let's take a look at a known malicious piece of software and build a hash signature for it so that way ClamAV can detect it. Back in August, AT&T Cybersecurity published this article about PRISM attacks that were detected uh, using a cluster of Linux ELF binaries that had very low antivirus hits on virus total. In the article, they disclosed a GitHub repository that contained some of these binaries. At the time, I was able to clone that repository and save those samples. If we take a look at this and see what ClamAV is currently detecting, we can see that right now, none of these files are being detected. If we check the, the article again, we see that here we have three files that at and has determined to be part of the malware. And lo and behold, here we have the three binaries. All of them are ELF. There's a 32-bit version, a 64-bit version, and the piece of malware itself. So if we want to detect these specific compiled binaries, what we can do is create hash signatures. The easiest way to do that with ClamAV is with the ClamAV SIGTOOL command. This command takes several options, among which are MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-256. The easiest way to use the SIGTOOL command to generate a hash is to give it one of the hashing algorithms and the file name as arguments. If we want an MD5 hash, we use SIGTOOL dash dash, md5, and then the file name. And what we get back is the md5 hash of the binary, the size of the binary, and SIGTOOL uses the file name itself as the signature name. What we can then do is take this information, copy it, and put it in a .hdb file. I'm calling this prism because that's what is associated with it, and we can call this prism bin.1. Now, if we run clamscan against these same three files, we get back that we have one detection. So, what does the SHA-1 hash look like? Well, why don't we use that to detect the second binary? We see a SHA-1 hash here, again, with the file size, and again it uses the name of the file as the signature name. So we can go back to our prism hdb, put this in, 
prism.bin.sha1.1. And as easy as that, we now have two of these three binaries detected with their appropriate signatures. And finally, SHA-256 on the largest of them. And again, it's the same format. Hash, size, and the file name as the signature name. As you can see, I'm putting all of these in the same file, and ClamAV has no problem with that. And as easy as that, ClamScan is able to use the updated signature file and detect all of these malicious binaries. So now we have full file hashes for these. The second type of signature that ClamAV can use is the PE section hash signature. These signatures leverage the hash and the size of a PE binary section to use as the signature. In order to differentiate the section signature from a full file signature, ClamAV swaps the order of the hash string and the size field. As such, the section signature looks like this. PE section size, section hash, and then the name. We can take a look at what that would look like on a real sample by using this sample from abuse.ch's malware bazaar. We see that this is a PE32 executable with a GUI, and we can do sigtool mdb to store the section hashes and give it that file name. And here we have the size and the hash for each of these five sections. In order to turn that into a signature, what we can do is create a .mdb file, and then we can paste in these lines, remove the debug statements, and give it the names. So we can just say abuse ch, give it the name there, and we can call this .0, .1, .2, .3, and dot four. Now, if any file has a PE section that matches one of these sections, we will be able to detect it. Now that we have those signatures in place, what we can do is we can rescan that file, and ClamAV will tell us right off the bat that we are matching section zero of this file. Now we know how to create our own signature from an existing file which is great if you have a ready source of non-executing malware that you can analyze. But not everyone has that. So what's the point of being able to write your own signatures? Well, the internet is the point. There are innumerable sites that publish articles about malware and provide information about what to look for, i.e. indicators of compromise. We can use that information to proactively make signatures. If we take a look at the PRISM article again, among the information that they provide, is a list of SHA-256 hashes. Now we have half of the information for creating our own hash signatures. How do we get the other half, the file size? Well, the easiest way is to check virus total for the hash. If we take this signature for what hostname is and go to virus total and search for it, what we get back is the fact that 24 security vendors flagged it, but then in the details section, we get the file size. Here we see that it is 11,300 bytes in size. And now we can make our own hash signature. If we open up Prism, we can take the hash that we got and the fact that the size is 11300, and we can call this prism.hostname as an example, since it was the hostname binary that gave this to us. And there we go. If this file should make its way onto our environment, ClamAV will be able to detect it. If this signature is being used on our mail server or FTP server, for example, we can now entirely block anything that contains that signature. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. And in the next video, we'll continue on with body or content based signatures and continue using examples from the AT&T cybersecurity article about PRISM. Have a great day.